Hi, welcome back to the Backyard Wood Shop. I'm Tom Ryder. Today we're going to be focusing on the future of the channel and also showing um, for uh, one of my viewers, Jose Garcia, my Milwaukee tools and my rigid rolling toolboxes. He wants to see what I keep in them and uh, how I use them. So I thought I'd share this with everybody and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of it. So let's go ahead and get started. I've left my full-time job. Um, I was in the printing industry for 30 years and now I'm moving forward with uh, home repair full-time. Uh, so that's part of why you haven't seen me making many videos. I've just been out you know, working on people's homes and I'm just going to continue that. But now that I'm full-time doing it, I'm hoping that once a week uh, I'm going to really try to make a video for you guys. Uh, it's still going to be mainly a woodworking channel, but there may be some home repair and some DIY advice mixed in. Just to give you an idea of how many batteries I carry, um, on the truck I carry four 3 amp hours, I carry a 5 amp hour, I've got two 6 amp hours, I've got a big old 12 amp hour, and I've got a 2 amp hour. Now, um, I have yet to run out of battery life in a single day using any of these. Um, occasionally you forget to charge one and the next day you go in and you know it's not fully charged and that thing still lasts half a day. Um, it all depends on the task you're doing, what tool it's on, but um, as far as battery life, um, the Milwaukee M18 batteries are just great. I've not had any issue at all with them. and. Uh, I endorse them. I mean, I think they're they're fantastic. Let's talk about what do I what do I bring with me everywhere. 100% um, of the time, I've got the the Gen 2, the new 18 gauge uh, brad nailer. Um, I carry the uh, narrow crown stapler. I do a lot of drywall, corner beads, and stuff, and I use this um, to fasten all that in. Or if uh, you know I'm doing a little tar paper or something like that, I'll I'll use the this and just bump fire it all the way across. This stapler uh, works just as good as the uh, 18 gauge. I've got uh, two of these little hacksaws. One's the fuel, one's the uh, brushed. Honestly, for me, it doesn't matter if it's brushless or brushed. Um, I know a lot of people are really keen on all that, but I've not really noticed, other than a little bit more heat, um, a difference in power and usage. Um, I love having two of these all the time. I might have one set, you know, with a, a wood blade, and the other one set with a metal blade. Batteries on them, and I'm just going. Uh, it all depends on what the job is. I don't even use a big sawzall. I just use these. Um, one of the things I got, and I thought, boy, that's not a great light, but actually, it's been pretty decent. Is this hundred lumen little flashlight? It's got LED. Um, I use it underneath uh, sinks and uh, vanities and things like that to uh, see up under there. It just, with the battery on the bottom, this thing's hard to knock over and puts light where you need it. Uh, one of the things I started noticing I needed more and more was a grinder. Uh, so I went out and bought a grinder. This is a brushed one. Um, you know, this, this comes in handy. I've got a metal cutting blade on it right now. You know, sometimes I'll switch it out, grind things down. Um, I put a tile tile blade on it. I'll cut tile with it. Uh, it's just really versatile, and it's got a little little guard that you can just spin. Um, I think it was like 99 bucks or something like that for the bare tool. Very very handy item. Let me shift over here. Now we've got. Uh, I've got a fuel dr drill driver. One of the things I will admit, uh, the trigger sometimes, you'll hit the trigger and the tool doesn't respond. But then as soon as you let it go and hit it again, the tool will come back. Uh, so that's one thing weird about these uh, this uh, brushless model. Same with the uh, impact driver. This has got the three speeds plus the uh, screw setting. Um, sometimes you'll hit the trigger and nothing will happen. You, you release it, hit it again, and it'll fire right up. But sometimes, you know, you're trying to drive that screw and you're in an awkward spot, and having to hit it twice is kind of frustrating. So I will admit the brushless does have a slight issue there. Um, then I've got the brushed. Uh, I love this little little brush driver. 
I grab it a lot more often than I do any of them because this thing just never fails. I mean, it's just ready to go all the time. Um, same with the uh, brush drill. Really happy with it. Um, but honestly, you can tell by, by how bad this one's beaten up. Um, I use it more often. Uh, but this one, the brush model is just as good. Sometimes, you know, uh, I'll just put a brush in it and, and use it to clean. I don't use it that often, but occasionally this right angle drill just fits the bill. You know, you just got a tight spot and you got to get in there. This takes care of it. Um, one of my favorite tools in all this line is their oscillating tool here, this multi-tool. Uh, blade change is a little bit slower than the newer models, I will say that, but uh, as far as holding a bit, this thing is solid. Uh, it locks the blade in for good. Uh, I love the variable speed and I love that I can just flip it on and I have to squeeze the trigger. My rigid model, I have to squeeze the trigger and hold it. Um, I really don't like that. I'd rather just flip the switch, dial in the speed I want, and I'm ready to go. Which This, this model works fantastic for that. Something I carry on the truck. Occasionally uh, I'm driving deck, deck lag screws or anything like that. I use this big impact, half inch impact driver for that or changing my tires. Uh, this thing works great. Um, this is a little six and a half inch circular saw. I carry it and it's done everything I need it to do. Um, I've got a guide that I made to match up to it. Works great for trimming down doors or whatever. It's lightweight, um, not that heavy. You can really work it. It's, it's a great little saw. Now one of the things I got in the original kit that I was like, what am I going to do with this, is this blower. It comes with two attachments. Um, I use it to clean out gutters. I stick this thing down in the gutter and it just, I tell you, it'll blow about 20, 25 feet away. And it'll, if the gutter is not soaking wet, it'll blow all that debris out. So I use this blower for, for cleaning out gutters. Uh, I'll hop up on the roof and walk around and uh, clean out the gutters. And uh, it gets the job done really quick because you know time is money. And then uh, that takes me to the bigger blower. I'll keep my 12 amp hour on this one usually. And uh, all the debris I've blown down into the yard or in the bushes, I'll use this to blow it away. And uh, one of the next things here is my Rover Light. I paid full price for this thing, and it is definitely worth it. This, I think, goes up to 3,000 lumens, but uh, it's really rugged. I've knocked it over a bunch of times. It's fallen out of the truck. Uh, it just works. It's got three different light settings. I use it for painting, for drywall, just general lighting. Um, if I'm under a cabinet for a while, sometimes I'll use this to... Uh, really light the whole cabinet up and uh, be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, I just love how compact and small it is. It doesn't take, take up any room in your truck. Uh, very, very useful tool. And this is a recent acquisition of mine. I just got this this year. Uh, it's their new, uh, I guess it's been out for a few years, their M18 vacuum. I'm shocked I haven't bought this before that because, man, when you're talking about quick cleanups or uh, you take the filter out and empty a toilet real quick with it. This thing is fantastic. Battery life is pretty decent. I leave a six amp hour in it and uh, you know I can run you know all day going to different spots with no problem. You know you're not running the vacuum all day you're just sucking up your debris and maybe a little bit of water here and there. And this answers every call I've given. It takes care of it and it doesn't weigh a whole lot either. Um, so that's pretty much all the Milwaukee tools that I carry on my truck. Talk about my rigid uh, rolling tool system here, these toolboxes. Uh, they're great, waterproof, dustproof, you know, um, inexpensive. Um, compared to the pack out, I'm sorry, uh, I'd go with the rigid every time. Um, yeah, the pack out's got some cool features. This one came with one of the toolkits I bought, um, but. Uh, just to go buy it, I really don't see the need because the Rigid does uh, just as good a job. Um, it's got the same 
basic features. The only thing I like about their medium box is center handle. When you lift that up, even though these are unlatched, you don't have to worry about losing your stuff. So that I do like. I use this in my truck seat a lot of times to carry tools, but um, I usually don't bring it into houses. Um, if I'm going into somebody's house, most of the time I'm using uh, these Milwaukee tool bags that come with your tools. I tell you, um, they're just easy. You, you got something in them, you can dump them out. They don't really puncture or anything. They're pretty tough. Um, they've got pockets, but I don't really worry about the pockets. I just mainly just throw everything in it and carry it in. The biggest plus to a soft tool bag over a hard tool box Let's say you're walking in and you're not really paying close enough attention and you bump their wall. Well, this bag won't most of the time do any damage at all where you might end up ditting a, ditting a corner of the wall or something with your toolbox. That's a big problem. So that's part of why I use soft tool bags a lot of times to go into customers' homes. I just throw in what I need and uh, go right in. It works out really well. But now let's get deeper into what's in these toolboxes. This is one of the bo the big bottom box. It's got the wheels on it. It's got the retractable handle. Uh, you really don't want to be carrying this in and out if you can help it. Because I've got all of my Milwaukee M18 tools in here except for the circular saw and the blow the small blower. They just won't fit. Um, but I keep them in a separate compartment anyway. So basically everything I need is right here, uh, ready to go. Uh, just set done, you know, um, my impact gun, I usually keep it pretty pretty close to the top, along with the light and uh, the drill. Uh, this little guy here, constantly grabbing it. Uh, the nailer, usually I have it towards the top, but um, yeah, so I keep those in there. And they work out great, and I just keep this... Uh, on the truck and I can just grab it whenever I want it and then I just wheel it away three two one so this is the small box the top box I don't usually carry this on the truck um, it's mainly got like uh, you know uh, 22s for the ram set fasteners uh, for when I'm doing basements you know attaching it to concrete uh, I carry a plumb bob in it. You know, this is, uh, and then I've got like some masks and gloves, and um, I've got my laser, my little laser for laying out lines. A um, little spot, a little headlamp, just uh, miscellaneous stuff that I usually will need when I'm on a basement job. Uh, a pair of safety glasses, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't really, I only bring this with me when I'm doing, uh, I know I'm going to be doing uh, fastening to concrete. This is my uh, medium box. I carry two of these full time on the truck. They're always towards the back and I pull out my slide out and uh, reach in, get whatever I need out of here. Uh, this here has got uh, all the miscellaneous stuff you kind of don't think about. Uh, I've got like a framing square right here. If you don't have one of these Swanson folding framing squares, they're great. They, they don't take up any space. Um, got a, a set of stair gauges, you know, for this. Uh, bevel gauge. Just the things you wouldn't think about. Um, this is a uh, cobalt ratchet and it, like extends out. It's for tight spaces. And you can see the handle spins. That is a handy item to have and you can, it actually extends for a little bit more leverage and you can just if I could be up in there and just spin this and tighten up a screw without having to worry about all that movement. Um, that's that's a handy little item up in cabinets and stuff like that, um, where maybe a power tool might be a little too aggressive. I always have a little sanding block that I keep in here. Little mini screwdrivers uh, for tight spaces. Uh, the biggest piece of junk I've got is one of these cobalt screwdrivers. <laughs> this thing, I mean, the little pin's always falling out. Um, Sometimes you flip it the wrong way and doesn't want to do nothing. Um, but for some reason I paid for it and I keep hanging on to it. I really need to take it back to uh, Lowe's and see if they'll give me another one. Because I think I broke it somewhere along the way. Uh, one of these DeWalt razor knives. Uh, 
They actually have uh, extra blades inside. A handy little knife, I will say, that I carry in here all the time, but uh, I'll give you the tip. My favorite knife is uh, this Milwaukee. It's a little fastback, but it's one of those new ones with the screwdriver on the end. Oh my gosh, this thing has saved me so much running and screwing around. It's got a flathead and a Phillips. It's all you need. So I'm working on drywall. I find a screw that uh, you know didn't get seated all the way. I just pop this out real quick, tighten it in. Uh, I'm back to business. I don't even have to go look for a screwdriver. So it works out great. Um, safety glasses, like I try to keep safety glasses in all my boxes if I can remember it. Uh, set of drill bits. I've got. Uh, this is the the nail gun that drives those concrete nails um i used to not carry it in this box and it seemed like i'd get to a job and this thing would be still sitting here so i just always leave it in this box now uh, hand saw this is a japanese pool saw it's got a it's basically two saws in one cross cut and a rip and you just put it together um and you're ready to go if i can put it in there right Somehow or another it goes in there, but <laughs> you get the message. Oh, I know what it is. There we go. There we go. You have to push the button in, and then you're ready to ready to saw. And I tell you what, these, I've really become a fan of these Japanese type saws. Um, they stay, they're razor sharp. This one is fantastic because you take the handle off and it folds away. I used to keep the guards on the teeth, but really I found that nothing hurts them. Um, multiple different size screwdrivers. I just got a bunch of them just laying down here. This is a CH Hansen uh, sill plate uh, for locating bolts and stuff. And it's a depth gauge and a bunch of other crap. But uh, I got it for like two bucks on clearance. And I mainly just use it as a as a quick square because it fits in a pocket really easily. You know, you can throw it in your back pocket. And I just use it to, to score straight lines. It's got an angle gauge, a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's a caliper. You can, you know, if you want to know the thickness of something, if you're fitting something, you know, whatever. But uh, that thing works works good enough. Uh, obviously, I keep a speed square in there. I've got a couple more in the truck. I just keep these all over because, man, I tell you, it always seems like you're looking for them. Uh, one of the big important things is a couple chalk lines for when you're laying out basements and stuff. These come in super handy. Uh, two different colors. Um, duct tape, obviously, staple gun, <coughs> excuse me, uh, multiple different size staples, uh, you know, if you're doing insulation or anything like that, um, vinyl floor tools for doing vinyl flooring, file, you always need a file for things. One of the big things you always seem to need is more power so sometimes in a basement they haven't run much electric yet so you might need a an adapter so i carry that with me but that's mainly what i carry in here a set of klein pliers because sometimes you know your electrical bags out in the truck and uh you need to need to work on something real quick um so this is just kind of the catch-all box of what i need and it's always in the truck, so I always know I've got it with me, and I try to always remember to put everything I take out of this back in it. This is my second middle box. Um, what I do with it is it carries all my plumbing gear. Uh, one of the things I carry, just, and I don't use these that often, but uh, is shark bite caps. So if you're, uh, this saves you from having to mess with solderer caps. You just throw these on. I've got one of these little plastic deals to take it off. Or just recently I picked up one of the tools uh, to squeeze it. And, and they're reusable. Um, I, I just happen to have three of them somehow. I, I guess I lost the fourth one. Um, and that's great for when you're doing uh, rough plumbing or anything like that. And you've got, say, CPVC or copper. Whatever half inch you've got, these will throw on. Um, most of the time it seems like I'm running into half inch, I guess, because that's what I've got in these caps. But they've have three quarters as well, I'm sure. Um, got my Blue Monster Teflon tape. Got to have that. Different pipe cutters, you know, tools. Um, I got these Accu cuts. Uh, if you're in tight spaces, these are the money, man. Let me tell you. Uh, one of these rigids works really good. 
This one's actually new. Uh, my old one broke, and I'll give it to Home Depot. I walked in there with the broken one. They told me to go back and grab one. I was out the door. So no receipt, no nothing. Just had the, the old rigid, and they exchanged it out. Because um, I really need to do that with this tool here. Because watch, that thing falls out constantly. I ended up under a sink where I really had to put some serious torque on a on a nut and uh, to get it loose. And it ended up stretching this thing out. And for some reason, like some some spots fit and some don't. And boy, when that thing falls out and you're underneath there, it really sucks. So I've got to stop by and, and get that replaced. It's a rigid. So. I bet you they, they'll just let me swap it out. Uh, so I carry a bunch of stuff in there. Got uh, plumber's grease, pipe cleaners, all that. Um, got uh, all my sanding gear. Got my tank, my torch. Like I said, everything I need is in this box. Um, I've got multiple pipe pipe wrenches I've got I got three of these Milwaukee um, uh, channel locks I really like these these are nice I picked them up on sale um, one of the things I carry I don't really tell people about this enough is I see plumbers all the time using a hacksaw to cut off the toilet bolts on a toilet use a pair of bolt cutters it's fast and it's clean and it's done you leave no metal shavings it just you just reach in there and cut it and these are just little they work great that's my tip of the day for you use bolt cutters to cut toilet bolts um, got different uh, PVC uh, pipe cutters in here you know everything you can need to do plumbing um, is in this box uh, I can do it from rough end all the way to completion and I know I've got everything and uh, I'm good to go the other plus to it is it's all self-contained. I don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, your tools get wet and all that. I just throw them in here. I, yeah, some of them are rusted, you know. What can you do? Uh, one of the tools that actually rusts, but I don't know why it rusts, but one of these one-stop wrenches, um, Rigid makes them. I tell you, for putting in uh, shutoffs and things like that, this set of wrenches is everything you can need. Super fast, super quick. Um, yeah, that's my medium box. Uh, so both of these are uh, mediums and they work great. I carry these on the truck full time, uh, never without them. So I always have these tools with me. This is the large box. Uh, what I carry in here is paint supplies. So this doesn't always stay on the truck. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, different rollers. Uh, paint brushes in here, different size paint brushes, you know, whatever's needed, can openers, just everything as sloppily organized as I can, paint mixer, uh, big old, big old paint guard, paint shield, whatever you like to call it, and I've got a, uh, a little one, I actually use this one a lot more often. Um, Different paint rollers, things like that. Got the paint pans here. I carry all these in there with the uh, with the guards and different rollers. A lot of times I'll have a, uh, always. I always try to use two of these. I'm goofy that way. Um, a couple different size pans. One just fits in the other. It just makes it more convenient. A nine and an eleven, but it doesn't matter, right? It's just paint. Uh, Paintbrush, you know, more paintbrushes. I've got different sizes. Um, one of my favorite little paintbrushes, though, is this little guy here. A uh, little short handle. Um, it just really works well. I need to clean it again. Looks like it's kind of taking a bit of a beating, but everybody knows you got like a favorite paintbrush. Uh, different extension handles in here and then I carry really long paint pole extension handles on my truck um, so that's gonna do it for this that's all the uh, rolling toolboxes and things like that everything else I carry is on my big big toolbox in my truck which that's um, linked to the, I'll try and put links to those videos uh, in the description below with uh, my uh, 
design toolbox. I send out free plans for those constantly. I probably send out eight to ten plans a day. Um, you know, they're free. There's no attachment. I don't make you subscribe to my channel or do any crazy stuff. Free is free. You you just all you have to do is email me. I don't keep your email. I just you send me an email asking for them. I flip you back one out, and I usually do it within 24 hours or less. So it's not like you're waiting all day. Um, I try to stay up on that constantly. I've been doing that for you know the whole time. Even though I'm not making as many videos, I am staying up on my channel. I try to read everybody's comments, um, get back to you as quick as I can. Some people I I miss, you know, for a couple days, and I apologize for that. But I do try to get back within 24 hours. So Jose, I hope that uh, this helped you out, and for all you watching, I hope it uh, gives you some ideas. So I like thank you for watching. And until next time, I see you in the backyard. So I'm in the Milwaukee line. Man, I just turned that off. <laughs> God. Drives me 